welcome you to the Fatal 4-Way live on ONTV. We are going to break down a lot of news and notes this week. We, it is a little bit different. We're actually reduced to a triple threat of sorts. Uh, conspicuous by his absence is one Sean Krugel, um, but we will be hearing from him later on in the program. But joining me in the studio to break down all kinds of of note of news notes we're going to look at the crown jewel pay-per-view that happens live tomorrow on peacock um all that and more but let's welcome in uh hollywood q quanell edwards and the stan lee of pfc brian balf gentlemen a lot of wrestling headlines as there has been each and every week here uh, but as we come into another premium live event weekend, a lot of focus is on world wrestling entertainment. But before we get there, let's shed some spotlight on what's going on beyond the borders of WWE. And that is AEW is gearing up for its next uh, pay-per-view offering. It happens on November the 23rd and appropriately enough, Full Gear is the name of this one. Two matches are really being the cornerstone of this particular event. Of course, the AEW World Championship will be on the line when John Moxley is set to put the title on the line against Orange Cassidy. And MJF is going to battle either Adam Cole or Roderick Strong. These are the two um, marquee matches of, of, this, of this particular card queue. I'll ask you first. Um, initially, do you have any kind of feelings on this? Do you see this going one way or the other? Um, in terms of Orange Cassidy getting a, a pay-per-view title shot against John Moxley, or this this rivalry with MJF, Adam Cole, and Roderick Strong. Uh, well, the the MJF and Roderick Strong and Adam Cole thing is a little bit more intriguing, but this this whole Orange Cassidy thing, I I don't know. I I I'm not buying into Orange Cassidy in this role. I know he's a very talented guy and he's very entertaining, but that's pretty much all it is. John Moxley is on a whole different level as a heel. Mm -hmm. I do like him as a heel, and uh, but but Cassidy dethroning Moxley, it, it it just does not sound real. It doesn't sound real, Brian, but it does happen under the banner of All Elite Wrestling. That's true. And Orange Cassidy has been one of these guys that the promotion has put a lot of stock into seemingly from the beginning I have gone on record I feel like this guy's you know gimmick is kind of a slap in the face in a lot of aspects but he's finally getting his just due in terms of being programmed in a high profile match he take nothing away he's been there he's been through the ups and downs of this company he deserves a, a high profile match I agree with that um, but I'm not going to sit here and say that it's not out of the realm of possibility that we could see a new world champion because the booking practices at AEW is not what we would call um, easy to predict at times. W would you agree with that? Oh, yeah. Um, I, I own an Orange Cassidy t-shirt. Right. I like Orange Cassidy. I like him for his entertainment value. Him as a champion, it's hard to see. Um, at this point, we kind of hoped he would evolve beyond his gimmick. And you know, with the skill set that he has, you would assume that it would happen. Uh, but yeah, it's, I don't, as much as anything can happen in AEW, I don't see him beating John Maxley and having the belt. And that uh, the whole thing between MJF, Adam Cole making his long awaited return to the promotion, coming out of an injury, Roderick Strong. We've, I've gone on record and said this guy has been underutilized. Under, it doesn't matter what oh, umbrella absolutely. he has been wrestling under. He's been in Ring of Honor. He's been with WWE or, or NXT, you know, primarily. Now with AEW, I feel like um, of the two, Roderick Strong should probably be the guy that's going to, you know, have this match with MJF because I'll be honest with you, I saw Adam Cole recently and take nothing away from what the guy can do in the ring he's very talented i mean the guy a long time nxt champion he has more than carved his 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 name in history books mm -hmm. for sure uh but on a poster 
you know, when you look at Adam Cole versus MJF or Roderick Strong versus MJF, I feel like you're going to get a better presentation with Strong in this slot. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. I, I, I've been singing the praises of Roderick Strong for a long time. He kind of reminds me of a modern day Dean Malenko. Sure. He, he, he has, he's very talented. I mean, his, I, I see where they're going with the, uh, with the storyline with Adam Cole and MJF. That's been a storyline that's been going back for what, a couple of years now. I yeah. mean, Adam Cole keeps getting hurt. You know, he's dealing with all these nagging injuries. He's not, he's not in the best of shape. That's kind of what I was <laughs> alluding to without coming out and saying he looks like crap right he, now he, in the physical sense. And you know what I've seen? And I don't want to poke fun. I don't body shame or anything like right. that. But just seeing the picture that was posted online of Adam Cole next to a Michael Cole and people making jokes that the announcer <laughs> of WWE looks better than the wrestler of AEW. That's that's a joke. That's a joke. I mean, that can't make you feel good about yourself. <laughs> but, it, you know, you and I, we have kind of a, a motivational side to us. You know, we like yeah. to inspire people. We like to motivate people. If that does not motivate Adam Cole to do something, get back in the gym. Look, right. I understand you're coming off of an injury. I understand that. But how many people have we seen go off on injuries? Triple H, Kurt Angle, Steve Austin. You can go on down the line. Well, maybe not Austin because when he, when he came back, he didn't look, look the greatest either. But the other guys that I mentioned, they're off for six, eight, ten months. They come back in the best shapes of, of their life. Can Adam Cole regain some, some degree of f physical prowess as he tries to embark on this, re on this return here? I mean, we're seeing Sheamus do it right now. Sheamus I mean, Sheamus came back man. large. Great. And, like, he's, you can see he's slowly getting back into that shape. But it's, the question is, is, does Adam Cole have the motivation? And that's just going to be it because if anybody is paying any attention to, you know, the online chatter with the IWC, um, a lot of spotlight was put on the very real breakup between he and, and Britt Baker. And you wonder some, and they've been together for a long time, mm -hmm. and they're working for the for the same pro, you know promoter. So right. you wonder if that is also playing a hand in this in some way or another. Usually, though, know. when people break right. up, that's when you get in your best shape because you're you back so. on the market. Right. Yeah. Well, that and you know, it's almost like <laughs> you're you're dumping me. I'm going to show you what what you're leaving, but you know, behind and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. now, Adam Cole hasn't been in the best of shape for pretty much his entire, almost his entire career. I mean, he's never been a big muscle guy. Right. He's always been, you know, the small guy. Now he just added a little, you know. Little. But he looked more lean. He looked he yeah. looked healthier. He doesn't look healthy right now. He looked more like a Spike Dudley back in the day. But now he's <laughs> looking kind of like a present-day Spike Dudley if you've seen him recently, you know. So it's, I don't, I, he's a young guy, so he has, he, 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 he has a chance to turn it around. I mean, just like you said, it's about the motivation. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, if you have a question or a comment, or if you are looking forward and making plans on ordering full gear and want to be a part of the conversation, our telephone number is 810-228-7233. Lines are open right now. You can call in live and be a part of the conversation. With that, we are going to switch gears to another big news headline that came down the pike this week with the announcement from Paul Levesque of a new, um, a, a new system in place that is going to, in my view, really change the landscape of the future of professional wrestling with the announcement of WWE ID. And what this is going to be is a new system to train and develop the new crop of stars in professional wrestling. I, I saw this announcement come down, and the first thing that I thought of here, Q, was they're creating their own territory system. Yep. This is what we need. Oh, yeah, and, that, and, and you know what? They already started the, uh, the NIL uh, program, mm -hmm. which is pretty much, you know, they're getting all the collegiate 
talent and everything, but adding the independent talent, I mean, you're talking about a wide range, and I love all the participants where they're pretty much taking different categories um, of, the, of America, you know, it's, it's spread out. And I thought about before the pandemic, you know, they actually had this plan in place, but you know, it was planting all of these different NXTs. You had NXT Europe, you had NXT Japan plan. Yeah. You had all of India. these different, yeah. India, you had all these different plans in place. So I believe this is what we're looking at now. We're, we're seeing it starting here in America, but I believe it's gonna spread worldwide. You know, it's it's hard to put into context for a lot of the newer fans, the younger fans, I guess I should say, Brian, who didn't grow up in the era of, of the territory system and why it was so crucial to the success and the ultimately the, the growth of the NWA, of WWE, and for a while the AWA before they went to the wayside. But even WCW, when when they took over for from Jim Crockett pr Promotions, the territories were still very much a pivotal feeding ground. And we have said since WWE kind of took over the entire industry, the one thing that we are missing, number one, is competition which we kind of get now with AEW on some level. There's a natural rivalry there. It, I mean, they're not on the same page, let's be honest here, right? But they, they do offer an alternative. TNA, Ring of Honor, Game Changer Wrestling, there's a number of them. Now you're starting to see the trend of what became independent pr promotions, and now they're starting to put this all under one umbrella. Five schools here have already received that, that, that stamp of endorsement of working with WWE on this program. And a couple of these, a few of these are very well, very well known. We have Booker T's Reality of Wrestling School in Houston, Texas. Cody Rhodes Nightmare Factory in Atlanta, Georgia. Seth Rollins Black and Brave Academy in Davenport, Iowa. Elite Pro Wrestling in Concord, New Hampshire, and Knox Pro Wrestling Academy in Los Angeles. We talked about it before we came out of the air here. They have all corners of our country locked down. How long, playing off of what Q said, do they expand beyond going to Canada, going into England, going into all these um, other countries and markets? Yeah, I think as long as you, they see that the school is established and is developing talent the way they would like to see it done, which if you're an independent wrestling school, like well, you, you'd, I'd be looking at those schools and be like, this is what we need to do so we can get under that banner as well. Because why wouldn't you want that type of affiliation with WWE? Right. And my thing is, too, is like, imagine the competition that you're now going to see at those schools. Right. Like, like people are not going to want to take pinfalls from other guys. They're going to want to showcase themselves. And it does wonders for the promotions themselves. I mean, you, Booker T, Cody Rhodes, and Seth Rollins, obviously the whole world knows who these guys are, mm -hmm. right? But you look at Elite Pro Wrestling and Knox Pro Academy, like these do not have big name stars attached to their Knox brand. Knox is Rikishi. Oh, it is too, isn't yep. it? Yep, so you got bloodline ties. Uh, well, there you, there you go. You're getting a whole nother crop of <laughs> bloodline members. But this is pivotal. And what I saw online with the announcement of this is, you know, because I had spent so much time in the business on the independent level, I was very curious to, to see how this news was going to be re received by other independent workers and promoters. And there are arguments for both sides on why this is a good thing for the business and why this is a bad thing for the business. And here's what I've come up with. Ultimately, just about every single person who has ever stepped foot into a professional wrestling ring on any level started because you were a fan of WWE. You, there was something about that brand that got you sucked in. Unless you were fortunate enough to grow up during the Monday Night War era, and then probably WCW may have been more on your radar, but where's WCW now? 
WWE is the standard bearer of this industry. Make zero mistake about it. It doesn't matter if you like their product or not, they are at the top for a reason. Most everybody wants that payday. They want that stardom. They want their name in the lights. They want to perform at WrestleMania. It starts here. And it doesn't matter if you are affiliated with these organizations or not. You could work for some promoter up in Saskatchewan, Canada. If you come to WWE, what winds up happening is everything that you have learned, it doesn't matter if you've been in the business for five years or 20 years, if you come under their umbrella, they are wiping your slate clean. They are going to retrain you on how to work the WWE style. Facts. This spearheads that. This jumpstarts that. So these five schools are in a very, very awesome spot right now. Would you yeah, agree? Absolutely. Now, my only question now is, or curiosity is, what the financial incentive mm -hmm. is, because I know they're they're going to be taking care of these kids in these schools. So uh, I, that, that's that's the only part that I want to see. But it, it it's a good sign. It's a good thing. It's good for the the up and coming independent kids, you know, because that right, they're kids, so they have to learn, you know, you, what what the babies drink. They drink milk, so you have to start with milk, and then when you get older, you eat meat. So it's it's a growing process <laughs> for them. <laughs> <laughs> it's a growing process. So WWE is going to grow you up, and they're going to start feeding you some meat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if I want to comment on that. I mean. I mean, look at it, though. Like, if you were in one of those states and you wanted to go to a wrestling school, you're going to go to the one that has the WWE ID. Like, I would be nervous if I was any of those other schools in Texas, Georgia, Iowa, wherever the rest of them were. LA. California. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you're, you're stealing away people at that point. It's going to be real. There hasn't been a lot of the details, you know, in terms of the financials that, that are involved with this whole project. But, man, this is the brilliance of Paul Levesque and Shawn Michaels on full display. And it, I just watched a documentary uh, on Peacock this earlier this week and they were talking about DX the you know the original incarnation of DX and I said and I, as I was watching a lot of the old clips and all the antics that they did uh, back during the dawn of the Attitude Era these are the guys running WWE right now <laughs> and it just blows my mind DX just to is. think of that whole transition you know, the one thing... You even I'll, got Road Dogg sitting at the table. Right, right. Yeah. right. <laughs> you got Degeneration X kind of pulling the strings. Yeah. But These are fine. the guys feeding people meat. <laughs> yeah, they're feeding people meat. You're getting some meat from DX. Ain't that something? Yeah. <laughs> you can't go wrong if it's live, folks. Anyway, uh, the one thing that we have, I, I feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sure you will, the one thing that I have, I have appreciated about Triple H and Shawn Michaels with their approach with the future of the business is going back to basics. They are really focusing on the elements that made professional wrestling so great, and tag team wrestling is one of them. We have sat on these airwaves multiple episodes and talked about wanting the tag team scene to be revitalized, not just in WWE, but across the industry as a whole. And it seems like it's finally starting to happen, especially if you're a fan of SmackDown. The tag team scene on SmackDown is off the charts, but you're starting to see that across the board. TNA has really made a concentrated effort on putting some star power in their tag team scene. And it happened last weekend at the Bound for, for Glory pay-per-view that took place at Wayne State University uh, in suburban uh, Detroit, Michigan, where we saw the Hardy Boys win the TNA Tag Team Championship. I kind of went back and forth on this. I'm like, ooh, is this just trying to add one more accolade to their mm -hmm. career, one more notch on their proverbial belts? Did TNA tag them in for this? 
for that name recognition because you know we've been sitting here for weeks t talking about how this co this collaboration with WWE is going to be pivotal for TNA mm -hmm. and their future but bringing the Hardys in well established tag team one of the greatest tag teams of all time you can't you know I wasn't necessarily a fan but you can't argue the facts they are who they are was this a smart move on, on TNA's part by putting their titles on Matt and Jeff Hardy, even though their past, especially under their umbrella, is a little polarizing? Yeah, I mean, if it's a short-term thing to bring eyes to their tag team division and just even to TNA, yes. If it's long-term, and I feel like they're going to end up disappointing them in some way or another, because the Hardy Boys tend to disappoint great point that he brings up is this a short-term fix because history has shown you know you go beyond the six month mark they get real comfortable in their in their environment Jeff Hardy is real bad about this starts going back down those roads that he's trying so hard to get out of um, is this a short-term thing? Was this a good move for TNA? And is this going to be on an eventual bridge between TNA and making that jump back to WWE, possibly going into the, into the Hall of Fame with, with this new class? I think it was a good move. I think it was a good move putting the titles on them. Uh, I mean, they are, I mean, pfft, they're the Hardy Boys. I mean, so it's, it's they have name value in TNA. They, they need the name value, you know, so uh, it's, I do believe it's going to be short. You know, TNA, they, they made mistakes in the past, but I believe they're going to smarten up. They know that hard, the, that the Hardys have history. Right. <laughs> they have history, so they have to know if, if you allow them to keep those titles longer than six months, then you're just ignoring history. So uh, I believe it's going to be a short reign, uh, and that's all they need. They got the accolade now. They got the... The, the, the titles that they, I don't think they ever held the I don't believe TNA they held title. The so yeah. this is another accolade for them. So this is great. And I believe they are gonna, is gonna lead back to uh, WWE television because they're gonna go in the Hall of Fame and relatively soon. I gotta believe so, you know. I, I believe if they go WWE, I think it's gonna be NXT. I don't think they're gonna go to the main. Really? Yeah, I don't, I don't see them going to the main. I feel Brands, like they, either Raw or SmackDown. I think would, it's going to be NXT. I don't think neither. <laughs> I think they just come back just for the Hall of Fame. Really? Yeah. Well, I mean, that could be a thing, too. WWE also might just be waiting out to see, like, hey, you know what? Give these guys a run. If they don't mess up, maybe we'll pull them and give them a shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be real interesting yeah. because they have a golden opportunity to do a lot of good because, you know, they are who they are. TNA yeah. has a very young locker room. Mm -hmm. They could really use that that experience to really m mentor, motivate the newer crop of talent. Now, when you talk about the tag team divisions in professional wrestling, here locally in the state of Michigan, we are all abuzz because on these airwaves two weeks ago, we were anticipating the debut of the Motor City Machine Guns from here in Detroit, in the Detroit area, making their long awaited arrival to WWE. In the time from the, the last time that we were here on the show to here now, not only did they make their WWE debut, they are now the tag team champions in WWE. It is a crazy debut, but it was something that we were so hopeful for. Like we oh, yeah. wanted them not to get lost in the shuffle in right. WWE because there's relatively smaller guys in the lands of giants, right? But the way they have been featured to this point has been perfect. They have really spearheaded and added a jolt of excitement for SmackDown, which mm -hmm. they desperately need. Definitely. And they has really put the state of Michigan back on the map as far as, you know, real pure wrestling talent. Chris Saban, Alex Shelley, what, what are your thoughts on this? It made me smile. I mean, if you think about it, the old regime would have brought them in as the, the, the paintball kids from the D. <laughs> they, they, probably would have, they, probably would, they would have renamed them something silly. They right. would have had little paint guns. and. I am so excited <laughs> that Triple H, 
Triple H is an old school guy. Mm -hmm. So he knows that people outside of WWE can also have name value. See, these guys made a name for those, themselves outside of WWE, finally make it in 20 years later. I mean, and I'll actually watch these guys on T early TNA, mm -hmm. early TNA when AJ Styles didn't have no hair. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's insane that 20 years later that these guys are three matches in two weeks and they are the tag team champions. I'm excited for them. And, and Corey Graves put it perfectly. He said, this is your favorite tag team's favorite tag team. Yeah, I like that. I love yeah. that. Yep, absolutely. And it's cool that they finally get their just time in the spotlight, right? Yeah, I definitely don't think they jumped the gun on them. <laughs> Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Well, we are going to be watching and anticipating how their title run goes, who's going to be the first team that steps up. You got DIY, you got A Town, Down Under, you've got a lot of good teams the the street profits like there's a lot of good tag teams in wwe right now now it's time to put the pieces in place oh yeah uh, back yeah on raw back on raw you got war machine raw needs need, raw needs to step it up for sure war machines getting those titles oh for pete's sake they're gonna need something <laughs> more than just the war machines or the war raiders uh, if you have an opinion on this, be, by all means, the lines are open. 810-228-7233 is the number. And that leads us to Crown Jewel. And it is the next premium live event offering from WWE. 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon from the Mohammed Abdo Arena in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, this is a bigger card. And, you know, we talked a little bit off the air that like they've been having four matches maybe a promo segment in there uh but they've got a, a stacked card some of the biggest names of the company are going to be on display here there's more than one w women's match this year which says something because you know for the first time they were over there the women weren't allowed to be over there so you're starting to see that evolution a little bit of relaxation of that and i can appreciate that um, they're really trying to make this event pay-per-view worthy, like trying to bring it up to the classic or the big four standard. It won't be spoiler. Okay. I don't care what you do with it. It's not going to be one in, among the big four or a big five. It just isn't, but I do appreciate what they're trying to do with this. We're having champion versus a, a, a champion matches. The two world champions, the two women's uh, title holders, to crown crown jewel champions. Q, we've seen the belts, we've seen what this thing is going to look like, and even though it's not going to be a recognized or a title that's going to overtake one or the other or both, it is an effort to put some anticipation on on this show. We get Cody Rhodes and Gunther. Uh, t tomorrow in the main event WWE champion versus world champion I know what our personal feelings are about this but if we s take our personal f feelings out of it and look at the big picture where do they go with this have they booked themselves into a corner because I really feel like that they have I think they're gonna have some shenanigans in this match <laughs> I mean if you look at the way uh, the booking has been Lately, there's been a lot of shenanigans in just about every match. And I believe this one is already rumored that maybe Goldberg is going to cost Gunther, which I would hate. Please don't do that. Don't bring Goldberg to Saudi Arabia. Stay in Atlanta, Goldberg. St st stay home, Bill. Stay, we don't need home. you. I know he actually you. wasn't booked to go. Okay. I don't trust him. I don't either. <laughs> <Me> either. <laughs> but... But we can see Kevin Owens. I think we'll see Kevin doing Owens. the same thing on the other end. So I, I, I would rather see Gunther win, to be honest, because Cody's Teflon. I mean, Co Cody, if he loses, he's still going to be Cody. Gunther is more of the uh, what people are seeing as the secondary champion with the world title. So I, I'd rather see Gunther go over. On paper. You and I are, you know, we've talked about, you know, movie references 
how we can take things from a movie and incorporate it into the wrestling space. <laughs> I, I think you know yeah. where I'm going with this. <laughs> you see Cody Rhodes and Gunther. You, you look at that graphic right there. Is this Rocky and I, Ivan I would say, Drago? How do you blemish Rocky's name? By I know, comparing I him know, to Cody? but <laughs> based on promotion, the American Nightmare against the German Giant. What are we doing here? Like this, and what what irritates me about this is that this could be a WrestleMania match if it's built right. right. This is being thrown together for the sake of making this event relevant. Is this the right match to have? Is th this whole concept with the Crown Jewel Championship, is this a good idea or no? No, I told you from when they first announced this that I think having champion versus champion is going to be a detriment to some of the storylines that we'll have in the future. I think it, you're putting yourself in a corner for sure by doing this and saying that you're going to do this every single year. Right. I'm like, if you want to say, like, this is what we're doing this year, we're going to have these belts, whatever. But to say you're going to do this repeatedly, I think you're going to put yourself in a spot where you're going to be like, oh, now we have to plan ahead for Crown Jewel instead of like WrestleMania, instead of Survivor well, like, Series. Why, you know, why are we right. messing around with this? This was poorly planned. <laughs> well, here's my thing. We've been sitting here for months looking forward to the Survivor Series mm -hmm. because of the War Games concept. Yep. Once they brought War Games as part of the Survivor war, Series, war, war, war. <laughs> Survivor Series took on a whole different level of anticipation. Yeah. We're not even talking about the Survivor Series. We are on November 1 right now. Ordinarily, back in the day, three quarters of that card would have already been announced. We right. would have known the day after SummerSlam where we were heading towards this. We would have at least had the team captains mm -hmm. established. We don't even know where they're going with war games this year. I mean, we can presume that it's going to be bloodline related, but nothing's been set in stone. We're, we're wasting time on, on a program, on titles, on accolades, and in the grand scheme of things, isn't going to move the needle. Because as I understand why they're doing the Saudi shows, I understand it for all intents and purposes, it's easy money. The Saudi government is paying WWE a boatload of money to bring their show over. I get it. From a business standpoint, it makes all the sense in the world. But from a, stand, from a fan standpoint, from storyline standpoint, this is a glorified house show that they're trying to seem to make relevant. You, you need to look no further than who they have lined up for the women's crown jewel match with Liv Morgan and Nia Jax. If this match goes over five minutes, something is terribly wrong here. There's, there's just no reason for any of this, in my view. Honest, I don't have five seconds to put a, together words for this. <laughs> for, the, <laughs> for the Naya and I mean, live one? Yeah. Maybe tip, tippy, tippy. That's that's <laughs> where I say if you want to make this crown jewel somewhat relevant and mean something, I think Tiffany should cash in. On Naya. On Naya. Or, I mean, they're both there. Right. She doesn't have to cash in right. on one or the other. She could cash in, make that a three way match, and she could end up walking out with that crown jewel belt. See, now, if they had done this, let's say, okay, SmackDown happens live t tonight. Or, I don't know if it's live or not. Probably not. Pre tape. But if they were smart, they could, if they wanted the women's match to be relevant, they could have had Stratton cash in on Liv Morgan Monday night and then had her go into Saudi Arabia and have that, that match with her and Tiffany. I, from a storyline perspective, it would make more sense. It, and it would look better on paper if it went the other way, if he had Liv against a Tiffy. I don't know. I just, with this match, it just seems like it's, it, they're trying to put five pounds of crap into a two and a half don't pound bag. Don't talk about Naya like that. <laughs> uh, right. Also, if you get Tiff to cash in on Liv, then you now have something for Liv to do with Rio. out. Right, right. Yeah, and there's no telling how. Have they said how long uh, Rhea Ripley is going to be out for? They have no timetable. Yeah, I, I haven't seen that either. Let's uh, look at the other matches that they have scheduled as part of Crown Jewel. You will see 
A triple threat match for the United States title when Carmelo Hayes and Andrade will challenge L.A. Knight. That's going to be a good match. What, what's your pick on this? I'm going L.A. Knight. <laughs> Brian. L.A.'s a big fan there in Saudi. He's definitely not going to go over. Uh, we're also going to have a fatal four-way for the tag team championship for the women's uh, t tag team titles, I should say. Jade Cargill and Bianca B Belair will defend against Kyrie Sane and Evil Sky. Lash Legend and Jakara Jackson and Chelsea Green and Piper Niven. Do we see new, new champions here? Nope. Yep. Who? Metaphor. <laughs> I got to go with that. This is the Fatal 4. We, anybody that's got four in their name, we're going with them. But no, I, I actually think <laughs> I think that uh, I, I honestly feel like they might take it. I feel like they've been showcasing them on Raw, SmackDown, NXT. I think it's for a reason. All right. Okay. Uh, we will also see a six-man tag team match with Roman Reigns and the Usos will be taking on the Bloodline Solo Sokoa, Tama Tonga, and uh, Jacob Fatu. Another, another sub-story in this long, winding war. Is this what sets up war games, do you think, here, Q? Yeah, I think this is a... Uh the step towards it. And I think Timu bloodline is going to be the ones that's going to take the win here. <laughs> Solo has been eating too many L's. So this is going to be his time to actually get a W. Is it over Ro Roman Reigns? What <laughs> does he pin Ooh. Roman Reigns? Oh, that's a big one. That would make them stronger. For real, that would make if them you're going to get them stronger. back on track. Yeah, that's, the, that's your sure step. Yeah. I wouldn't mind that to be honest. No, I'd like to see that. Yeah, I also, I'm curious if we're going to see more bloodline members appear. Because we're going to have to at some point to be able yeah. to fill in a War Games card. Unless you're going to bring Sa Sami Zayn back into the fold. You know, he's been feeling oozy lately. Yeah. So, I mean, the, and there's history there. You know, yeah. going into a couple of years ago. He could be a part of War Games. He could very well, be, very well easily fit into that equation. Yeah. Do we see The Rock show up? No. You don't think so? I don't think he's going to Saudi Arabia. Do you think he'll be in war games at Survivor Maybe. Series? Maybe. That's a good possibility. I, I hope so, because that would definitely boost that side up. I would take the team move off of it then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, two other big rivalry matches that are going to take place. Uh, we will be seeing Seth Rollins against Bronson Reed one-on-one. -on -one. And Randy Orton is going to be taking on Kevin Owens. Uh, what, what do you look for in these matches, Q? Give me Bronson. Yeah. Yep. Give me Bronson all the way. Clean. Yep. Yeah. Clean. No shenanigans. And uh, what was the other one? Orton and Owens. Orton and. Oh. Did, that Orton, was a, Orton hasn't won a PLE since he came back last and year. <laughs> and he is not going to win it this time either. Is, KO. It, is it because he's in the spot of his career now where it's time to start putting pe people over? No, I think it's storyline driven. I think it, we need Owens to win here so we see him end up going against Cody. Owens I'm like, there's no sense in him going right against now. Cody if Orton beats him. Yeah. Great analogy or a great comparison. Yeah, he's the new Drew McIntyre. It's, it all stemmed from the bloodline. And Kevin, he's talking, he's talking logic. I think we get Bronson Reed. I mean, he... You could easily put him over Seth by capitalizing on Seth's injury still. Seth rushed back, right. back the injuries. You put Bronson clean over. And he beat him up on Raw, too. Yeah. <laughs> it does go down tomorrow afternoon at 1 p.m., streaming exclusively on Peacock. Uh, check out WWE.com for all the latest news and information about this event. With that, we are going to run a quick timeout. We'll be back with more of the Fatal 4-Way live on ONTV right after this. Have you ever thought of producing your own podcast? ONTV offers the facilities, equipment, and training to help you get your own podcast off the ground. Learn how to record your show and get it out to the world. Cost is $25 per person, which gives you access to ONTV's podcast room and equipment. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orientontv.org today. Nine. Eight. Eight. Are you or someone you know having thoughts of suicide or experiencing a mental health or substance abuse crisis? 
988 connects you to compassionate, confidential support for free. 988. 988 is the new three-digit dialing code for the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. For years, the Lifeline, formerly known as the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, has answered tens of millions of calls and helped people overcome mental health-related distress. 988 is the same trusted resource. When you call, text, or chat 988, you'll be quickly connected to trained crisis counselors who will listen to your concerns, provide support, and get you additional help if needed. There is hope. The Lifeline works. You are not alone in crisis. Just call, text, or chat 988. 988! Knowing how to identify signs of crisis in others and help connect them to resources like the 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline is an important way to prevent suicide in Lake Orion. For information about free suicide prevention trainings offered in our community, please visit the North Oakland Community Coalition at nocmi.org. And we welcome you back to the Fatal 4-Way live on ONTV along with Quadell Edwards and Brian Balf. I'm Jason Klaus. Uh, we certainly appreciate you tuning in here. And conspicuous by his absence is Sean Grugel, who was unable to be here t tonight. But he did, uh, he did submit his, this week's yes, Shooting the Ropes segment. So with that, let's roll the Shooting the Ropes with Sean Grugel. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Jason, Q, Brian, thanks for taking care of things while I'm gone. I know, I know, I was the only guy with a perfect record and a fatal four-way, but I had to take today off, man. Uh, I have to go out, dress up like Helen Roper, yeah, you know, from Three's Company, to help bring awareness to the Holly Memorial Women's Fund. Uh, it's a great program, brings a ton of awareness to all the great women in the history of my town here in Holly, Michigan. And I am more than happy to don a wig and run around town to bring awareness to this. I'm not real excited to have a breeze blowing up between my legs while I'm wearing like some kind of dashiki type dress. But you know something, it's all in the spirit of fun and bringing awareness. I'm more than happy to do it. Hey, uh, Jason, Brian, and Q, real quick, did you watch NXT this week? Did you already talk about it? I know this isn't a live video, but man, they are really putting together a w strong women's division. So much so that I almost feel like it's time for them to explore the possibility of having an all-women's pay-per-view or an all-women's syndicated wrestling show. I mean, with the additions of Zaria, Julia... Stephanie Vercure, the return of Nikita Lyons and Cora Jade. I mean, Tatum Paxley, So Ruka, the list could go on and on and on. This women's division in NXT is on fire. And I don't see why they wouldn't explore this a little bit further. I'd like to get your thoughts and feelings on this. But hey, welcome to Shooting the Ropes. I'm Sean Grugel. And I'm glad that you are here with us on the Fatal 4-Way today. So I want to talk about something that happened this past weekend that I'm really not too fond about. There was a TNA show that happened at Wayne State University, which is great, by the way. And a bunch of local wrestlers went to this show. Come to find out, uh, a promoter, trainer are now firing these kids because they went to this show because apparently when you are a professional wrestler or training to be a professional wrestler, you have to turn in your fan card and can no longer enjoy the things that brought you to the dance. Yeah, that sounds like a bunch of hot garbage to me. See, maybe back in the day when there were territories, when, you know, maybe you went from the New York Territory to the Texas Territory or the Memphis Territory, promoters, bookers, trainers wouldn't want you to go. Well, because, you know, they would poach talent back then. Unlike Vince McMahon when he raided the whole thing. But, you know, when it came to the territories, 
you probably shouldn't have went and visited those type of shows. You know, uh, what these promoters and trainers are doing nowadays is like telling a baseball player, uh, let's just say a local minor league baseball player, that they're not allowed to go to the World Series because they're a baseball player now. Yeah, you know what they're going to do about that? They're going to flip up the old double middle finger and they're going to go into the World Series. To the promoters and trainers, to the workers who are hearing this, listen to me very carefully. Promoters and trainers, you need to stop telling your kids that they can't go to these professional wrestling shows. It's not the territory days anymore. There's a lot a person can learn from going to a major league show. They can learn production values. They can learn how to set works. They can learn to set up the teardown. They can learn from the workers in the ring. They can learn timing. They can learn how to work a hard cam. They can work how learn how to work with a crowd, how to elicit a response. But you promoters and trainers who are telling these kids they're not allowed to go to these shows to enjoy the one thing that brought them to you to pay you your fee for training them, you are doing them no favors. And to you young workers out there who are hearing this from their trainer, who are hearing this from a booker, who are hearing this from a promoter, if you get fired from an indie company, first of all, that's hilarious because you're not under contract with nobody. And there's a hundred different other wrestling companies out there who would probably love to have you on their roster. That promoter, that trainer, that booker, they don't have your best interest at heart. They're not looking out for you. And they're not looking out for the one thing that brought you to the dance. So if you get fired from one of these independent wrestling companies, consider yourself thankful. Because sometimes we get complacent in what we're doing. Sometimes we get very comfortable in our own skin. Sometimes we like to be the big fish in the small pond. Go out. Take the skills that you have learned. Parlay them into something else. Go explore. Go find another pond to swim in. Go find bigger fish to take down. Because once you're that big fish, once you're at that top level, there's nowhere else for you to go in that small pond. Always look for the BBD. The bigger, the better deal. Don't listen to these guys who are trying to hold you back. There's probably a couple reasons why they're doing so. They've never made it themselves and they don't want their students to leap ahead of what they've done. They're scared that maybe you're going to take their spot. They're scared that maybe you're going to look better than them. I don't know what independent wrestling is, has become or what it's becoming. All I know is that there's a lot that I don't like. There's a lot that I don't want to see. And that's why we got a segment like Shooting the Ropes. To educate young workers. To answer any questions you have. To lead you in the right direction. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns... Send them to us at the Fatal 4-Way page. Send them here. Send them here to Lake Orion on TV. I mean, there's a video. You, you can see, you know, where you're sending it to. Send it to me. You don't like what I got to say? Shoot the ropes, babe. I'm here. But if you don't like what I got to say, you can duck to you and get out of the business. Because I ain't going nowhere. You can't cancel this guy. And with that, Jason, Brian, and Q, I'm going to go put on my Helen Roper rig, and I'm going to go out and raise awareness for the Women's Memorial Fund here in Holly, Michigan. Hope you all had a happy and safe Halloween, and we'll see you in a couple weeks here on the Fatal Four. Welcome back to the Fatal 4-Way Live here in ONTV from Lake Orion, Michigan. We certainly appreciate Sean uh, taking time to send in 
his uh, shoot in the rope segment. Brian, with that, we're going to switch things over to you, my friend, in this week's Mount Rushmore. The segment everyone's going to wait for. Absolutely. We <laughs> saved the main event for last. Uh, so I saw a video online. It was uh, CM Punk talking about, they were asking him a question. It was like, if you were in a bar and you were going to have to take on 50 people in this bar, what four wrestlers would you like at your side? I thought, what a perfect Mount Rushmore for Absolutely, us to have. Yeah. So that's what I posed the question to you guys. Mm -hmm. We're going to do our four guys that we'd like to have on our side if we're in this giant bar brawl. We put Haku in the oh, yes. honorable mention because he was universal across. So we took him off the table. But aside from Haku, our top four guys. I just wanted to clarify that. All right, so I'll go first. And here we go. There's my graphic. Uh, I'm going to start out Brock Lesnar course UFC heavyweight champion collegiate wrestler legitimate <clears throat> badass all Huge. the way around yeah intimidating number two Alistair slash Malachi Black amazing kickboxer you watch his, what he does in the ring that's all legit also love, love, love let's see it Arn Anderson all you hear is stories about how legitimately they get into quite a few bar fights mm -hmm. tough guy was stabbed by Sid Vicious yeah. repeatedly. Yeah. That's what I need because he's going to get stabbed by a broken beer bottle a few times. He's going to take <laughs> those stabs for us. Then, big boss man. I got him in full cop apparel. He's going to be in there. People are going to be like, whoa, maybe we shouldn't do this. And if they still go, nightstick. Absolutely. Nightstick and handcuffs. And big. he cooks dogs. <laughs> <laughs> he delivers the meat just like and WWE. He and he drags dead humans over, <laughs> over oh, the <to> cemetery. <laughs> well, he'll, he'll take care of the bodies. <laughs> Q, let's bring up uh, your Mount Rushmore. Very good s selection, by the way, Brian. Very good selection. All right, all right here we go. All right, so I started with New Jack here because, uh, I mean, we're probably all going to go to jail after. Uh, He's got uh, the stable least. gun yeah, in hand, we're too. probably all going to go to jail after that. But uh, I got New Jack. He's a nut. I got Vader. I mean, you got size, you got somebody that's intimidating. Then I went with Umaga, not only for his size and his intimidation, but, man, you probably got a couple of bloodline guys waiting on, waiting in the wings, you know. So you got more people. Now bloodline never ends. Then you got <laughs> <laughs> WWE Hall of Famer. WWE Hall of Famer. <laughs> Donald Trump. <laughs> Now I got the Secret Service <laughs> on my side. And a guy who can take a bullet. <laughs> and a guy who can take a bullet even if it's in the ear. <laughs> I think just looking at this, you might have the most intimidating group to look at. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's for sure. Uh, let's, let's, <laughs> did Vader, didn't Vader push his own eye back in the socket? Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. He's, that's a scary individual right there. Dude. That, that's how you know you're B.A., when you can pop your eye back yeah. in. I in, hope in that I never eye. get that opportunity to prove <laughs> oh. myself. <laughs> With the good Stan Hansen, was it not? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yep. All right, let's bring up Sean's Mount Rushmore real quick. Uh, his is pr – <laughs> his – I mean, you want to talk about straight shooters. I mean, he's got them. Locked down. Dan the Beast Severin, the Lethal Weapon, uh, Steve Blackman. Ken Shamrock, and to my surprise, <laughs> May Young. But listen, if you're if you're 80 years old and you're being power bombed through a table off a stage, you deserve to be on on this list, I suppose. <laughs> I you? wish Sean was here. I hate most of those picks. I hate most of those guys that were once UFC fighters. <laughs> They're terrible. Dan Severn, terrible UFC record. Had one of the most boring fights ever in the UFC. Didn't even know how to punch somebody, laid on top of them. And this is old UFC where it didn't stop. Right. They, they, they didn't even tap. He didn't know how to submit a guy. He didn't know how to rear naked choke a guy. Just sat on top of him. They're like, you have to do something. Ken Shamrock, terrible loss record. His record is only boosted by the fact that his dad ran the shoot fight uh, league that he was in for a while. It was basically half pro wrestling, half MMA. Awful. Steve Blackman, whatever. He's the Chuck Norris of WWE. Sean, you need to be here so I can tear you apart. <laughs> You're going down. Yeah. Also, these guys were all based, 
at least Severin and Shamrock, they never knocked anybody out. They were wrestlers. Good luck wrestling 50 guys at once. You should have picked Donald Trump. <laughs> Definitely should have picked Donald Trump. <laughs> All right, let's pull up my my Mount Rushmore. Enough said. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey, listen, I'm walking into a bar with these four guys. <laughs> Nobody is taking us. I don't care. Ron Simmons is... Yeah. Listen, he yeah. has a word, and I can't say it on these airwaves, but there is a word that perfectly d- describes him, self-described. <laughs> uh, I mean, he's un f withable. You feel me? Got yeah. It. Okay. Got it. John Layfield is as – he's a badass. He can legitimately knock anybody out on a whim unless you're in the brawl for all. He tr- <laughs> literally says drink or fight. <laughs> right. <laughs> And then right. you got the Road Warriors, unhinged, oh, forget about that. Strong, like yeah, these. That's my as long as Hawk isn't drunk. Right. <laughs> oh jeez, yeah. <laughs> oh no. Well, I don't. Yeah. Maybe not too drunk. Too drunk. Not because if, if, if he's falling over, then just kick him to the side right. and use the three guys. But you know, animals used to that, so he'll yeah. pick up the slack. <laughs> so there, there is that. I mean, I mean the spikes. We're I think spikes, you get so. such an advantage with the spikes. Yeah. I mean, just the, be like, yeah, I'm good on all that. Um, as we start to wind this episode down real quick, I want to make mention of something real quick. This is a quick, um, I wanted to make mention of this only because of my personal ties to it. But I received news this week that uh, one of the greatest guys I've ever had the privilege of working with within the realms of the Michigan wrestling organization are hanging up the boots this weekend. Uh, The cannonball, Alex Steele, let me know that tomorrow he is um, performing in his last match with Mr. Chainsaw Pro Wrestling. Um, I'm not really sure who he is wrestling against on that particular show, but I do know after a conversation with him this week that uh, when that final bell rings, it will be done. Uh, in terms of his in-ring c- career. And I w- just wanted to, to take a moment and uh, and say a few things. One, um, our business is measured by heart. It's measured by determination. It's, it's measured by character, not what you portray in the ring, but who you are as an individual. This guy had all of that and then some. He and his brother, uh, Andrew, came to the MWO in 2004 as fans. And during that time, through a lot of hard work, a lot of determination, a lot of twists and turns along the way, and a lot of dealing with other people's bullying and other bouts of bull crap, they persevered. They carved their niche and became one of the most b- beloved acts in the history of the Michigan Wrestling Organization, and then in turn took that beyond the borders of the MWO and carved himself out a very respectable c- career within the ropes. Making the the decision to hang it up is never an easy one, but when you know it's over, it's over. And I have no doubt that tomorrow, when he steps into the ring for the last time, he will put just as much effort and determination and his all on his last match as he did with his first and everyone in between. I salute you, Alex. I congratulate you, and I thank you for everything that you have done, not just for the MWO, but for every other promoter and worker that had the privilege, whether they realized it or not, at the time of working with you in this crazy and unpredictable world of professional wrestling. All right. Well, we certainly appreciate everybody tuning in here. We will be back in two weeks' time. In two weeks' time for the next inst- installment of the Fatal 4-Way for all the latest news and information in and around all of our shows here. You can check us out on pfcnetwork.net. With that, go out, be awesome to yourselves and to each other. We'll see you next time right here on the Fatal 4-Way live on ONTV.